Enemy spotted. Target acquired. We saved her. We're getting an angle. Enemy defeated. Wow. That's a great way to get rupees. Whoa. Hold up. Wow. I would never thought to kill the um, little rabbit guys like that. All right. New target acquired, but can I find a path to him? That's the question here. Tank doesn't do so well with ruins, unfortunately. Okay, we're getting an angle on him. We're coming in with the hot flank. He's going into the ruins to defend himself. He's got cover. But the cover's not good enough. Enemy defeated. Dude, we are literally invincible in this thing. Oh. I'm going to show you guys how to make an actual tank in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Believe it or not, not only can you make cars in this game, which I'll cover in another video, you can make a tank. An actual tank that can kill enemies. Now, this is something that's better late game when you have bigger battery charge, but I actually have ways for you to do this even early game if you do the things I'm going to show you in this video. Now, in order to do this, we're going to need a few things. We're going to be able to get all these different Zonai parts. And they're all going to come from these Zonai device capsules like this. So in order to do this, we're going to need a ton of that material. The Zonai, uh, Zonai charges. So we have down here the Zonai charges. We have 34 of them right now. Now I have videos on, uh, I have a video on how to get this. There's a way to get 100 per hour consistently whenever you want. If there's a shrine you don't finish. Also, you can always just go to the Great Sky Island up here and just kill the Flux Construct and run around killing all these enemies once every Blood Moon or however often they respawn every now and then. Uh, you can do things like that, whichever way. You know, get, gotta get these zone eye charges so you can turn them in at the vending machines. Also, gotta watch out for lightning, because lightning will destroy your tank. And then, you're gonna need to go to two different vending machines. So, there's a vending machine down in the depths, and there's a vending machine up in the sky that you'll need to get to. I'm gonna show you how to get to both of these real fast. And once we have those, we can get all the parts we need in order to build an actual tank. So, one of the first places you're gonna want to go is here. So, in order to get here... You're going to have to go to this hole in the ground right here. So this is, I don't know, you just got to figure it out. It's, it's right here. Okay, just go here and jump down in this hole. Then once you get down in that hole, you can go here and activate this light route and then follow the wall all the way around. Follow the wall till you get right around here. And then you can glide all the way down to this con construct factory to this other light route right here. And then once you're at this other light route, you're going to head over here to get to this device dispenser. So in order to get to that device dispenser, we're going to head over this way to the... Uh, east and then you'll go inside of this building but there's a few a little, so there's something you're gonna have to do in order to get to it's not just right in the building you're gonna have to get up to a certain area so you're gonna get into here and if you've just come here off of a fresh teleport then these devices will be back so you're gonna go over here and you're going to smack one of these rockets with any kind of melee weapon which will then bring you up to here and then you can go over here, and here is the Zonai device dispenser. Now, one of the things that we want from this one, well, there's a lot of things that we want from this one, but you can go in here, you can hold five of these, and then add them to here in case you don't know how to use a device dispenser. And you're going to do this, you can skip it in order to save time, um, in order to get wheels, and in order to get... Um, we're looking for wheels, and we're looking for the steering sticks. That's what we can get here. And that pretty much covers almost... That covers, covers everything we need for the tank. But there's actually another piece that we ideally want. But either way, you'll go here and you'll just dispense stuff and dispense stuff and dispense stuff. And like I said, you need small wheels, big wheels, and a steering stick. And a construct head, actually. You're also going to need the construct head in order to shoot a laser beam, basically. Uh, and I couldn't, there might be, there's a, probably a third device dispenser we're going to have to go to. I forgot about the beam. I took it for granted. So we're actually going to need a third device dispenser. But we're also going to have to go over to this one because this one will let us get batteries. So this is our next stop. There's a shrine up in the sky. It's called the Kadunar Shrine over here in the Elden Sky. And you can get to here by going to the Elden Canyon Skyview Tower right here, launching yourself in the sky, and then gliding to one of these platforms and finding a way up to here. I don't know if you can just glide straight to this one or if you got to land on a platform and use some kind of device. But either way, once you get up here, uh, there's a shrine like that I was just at, and you can use that to teleport here whenever you want. But the more important thing here is there is another device dispenser. So for this one, we're going to also put in our Zonai charges. 
and this one has the batteries. Now, batteries are extremely important because uh, batteries make it so that you don't have to rely on your natural charge. Now, they're, they're more important early game. Later on, you can have like a ton of battery charge inherently, and then you won't need the batteries, which will make it, it, it takes away one of the steps, and batteries are not reusable here, so it's actually better if you just, the late game don't need the batteries, but a lot of you won't be late game when you're looking at this video, so this is something for, you know, if you want to have a tank earlier on in the game without having a crazy battery charge. Then, you're going to go over to another device dispenser over here at the Juru Tagumak Shrine. And this shrine is one of those ones inside of a giant sphere. Now, you can get to this one by going to the uh, Uplands Arana Skyview Tower. It's literally right above it. Just try to, li like, land inside that circle. It'll be moving around because of this crazy contraption. But either way, you can go here, get the shrine, and then you can just teleport here whenever you want. And you can put in Zonai charges into this in order to make beam emitters. Now this one, you won't have to use very often because you only need one beam emitter per tank because the beam emitter uses an insane amount of power. So you really, really don't want to have more than one. It's just going to drain your battery so fast. Uh, that's assuming you use the beam emitter. You could use a shock emitter or a cannon or something. I really played with those. There's a lot of options for the tank's damage. And if you need Zonai charges for those things that we just did, if you haven't completed this shrine, then don't complete it. We've got the Tani, Tanhi Shrine up here. And there is a Lindor Brow Skyview Tower you can use to try to get here. And then try to fly around and find a way to get up here. If you can get to this shrine, you go in here and there's a combat training archery uh, shrine here. And if you just kill all the enemies in it and then leave before actually getting the Light of Blessing, it'll let you kill three of the Zonai Constructs and get three Zonai Charges every two minutes. Which is effectively 90 to 100 Zonai Charges per hour. So that's one way you can get them. Another way to get some quick ones is to go to the Nacho Ya Shrine. This is on the Great Sky Island where you started the game. And you can go here every, I don't know, few hours. And the enemies will have respawned every few hours of game time. And then you can dive over here. And there's this circular platform over here. And down here, you'll be able to fight a Flux Construct. So he's right here. Uh, if you don't know how to kill one of these, you can see I have a guide for it in, one of the, in the description of this video somewhere. But the, the TLDR is that you just beat up the, um, the one square that's controlling it. And then whenever it goes into its whatever form, you're just going to try to pull this square away. Now, this is the easiest one. There's also Flux Constructs 1, 2, and 3. All right, 2 and 3 on top of this. But this one's going to be the easiest. And they all yield about the same zone I charges. Although the, um, the number 3s also give large zone I charges. So yeah, then you'll just go in here and you'll try to grab the square that he's part of, like that, and then pull him out, and then just keep beating up and kill him. This will give you Zonai charges. You can also just go to the Great Sky Island and run around and kill all the Zonai enemies here in order to get more Zonai charges. And between all that, you can find a way to get enough Zonai charges to build your tank. Also, if you want to expand the amount of battery that you have naturally in the game, you can do that right here at Skyview Tower next to the Natria Shrine. Just bring that guy the refined Zonite or whatever it's called, Crystalline, Zonite, I don't remember what it's called. Bring him 100 of those and he'll give you a bigger battery charge. So eventually you can just do this without using the batteries that we bought. So now what we're going to do is go wherever you want to have a tank. There's places all over the map that have these building materials. We go here and it says Hyrule Restoration Materials, blah, 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 all this stuff. And you'll see these all over the map. And so you can use these or you can use anything that you want. You also have the, although it'd be really hard to do it with it because they're so small, you could use carts and put like four carts together to make a bigger you know, surface and then have no you know, protection. You can make a tank any way you want. But I'm going to show you a way to make the most generic best tank here with wood. And then you can take the principles from this and apply them to any tank that you want to make anywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to set down one piece and that's going to be what we attach our wheels to. Then you're going to go to your inventory and what I personally like to do, now you can do this any way you want, but the small wheels are faster, but they can catch on the ground more easily. So on hills, you can get stuck. So what I like to do is have uh, two of the big wheels for traversing terrain and then two of the small wheels to give me more speed and then one steering stick so I can drive. And then we'll also need the construct head and the beam emitter, but we're not going to deal with those right now. We're going to wait till we have a top on this thing. So then we're going to throw down all these materials. And what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these wheels. Now, the wheels have arrows on them. You can see those green arrows. Right now it's pointing to the right. That way, that's what direction the wheels want to move. So we're going to rotate it to where that is the front. We're going to put the big wheels on the front of the tank. So that way we can easily get over any big terrain that like we could get stuck on 
Now we're going to do the same thing for this one. And we're going to bring it up and then over. Make sure it's facing the right way. And we're going to attach it on the side. These big wheels need that thing to be attached on the side. So they have something that they're rotating off of. If you attach it underneath, it's not going to do anything. So be aware of that. So now we're going to grab the small wheels. Now the small wheels on the top show an arrow of what way they're going to go. So we're going to make sure it's going the right way. Now, for, we can't actually put this on just yet because these ones, in order to do them the best way, we're going to want to turn this upside down and then get up on top and then take it and then find out which way is forward. Okay, this way is forward. Well, we're going to want to put it upside down and forward. And then what we can do is put it on the underside to increase the height of these small wheels so they won't get stuck on terrain as bad. That's like a really smart way to use these things. So then we got the arrows facing that way. We're going to do the same thing for this one. And then we're going to attach it to the underside of the corner back here. And now the wheels are attached. Okay, so now we got the foundation of our tank. All right, so now we can set this thing down. And it's going to look something like this. Now what we can do is we can take the steering stick and we can straighten it out. And then bring it to us. And then wherever we want it to be, I usually put it up towards the front somewhere like this. And now we've got the basic parts of the tank. So if we get on it, it'll move automatically. We can hold back on the left thumbstick to go in reverse. And we can hold forward in the, on the left thumbstick to go extra fast. Faster than the base speed. Also, you can turn once you have this thing on. So you can drive it like an actual car. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab one of these pieces while we're here. And we're going to try our best to attach it as square as possible to the side of the tank. So something like that. Um, it's a little bit off center. Let's pull that off and try again. Get it. Oh, don't want to fall off. All right, let's try again. Pull it towards me a little bit. And then maybe something. It's, it's hard because if the ground's not perfectly level, then it's going to cause weird results. So you're just going to have to play with this until you get it how you want it. I'm really trying to make it perfect for you guys right now because I know a lot of people get all OC about it being all messed up looking. So we're just going to... I'm finally just going to stick this thing on and if, it, if it's weird, it's weird. That was decent. So now what you're going to do is you're just going to drive this thing and if you run out of battery, you'll just wait for the battery to recharge or you can put those batteries on that I showed you earlier. But what you're going to do is you're going to drive around wherever you are trying to find the final pieces for your tank. Or if you want, you can just stick a beam emitter and a rod on it or something and just make an improv tank that has like no defense, basically. Uh, you can do it any number of ways. But in my case, I'm going to go driving off to another platform like that, another Hyrule Restoration Materials thing. And I'm going to go put more things on this and finish up the tank. All right, so I found another one that has the big pieces. The big pieces are what I like because it's fun to make a giant tank. But you can actually make a little tiny box tank as well, which would actually be smarter because the, the less that your tank weighs, the slower it'll drain your batteries from moving. So making the tank giant with tons of heavy parts on it will actually make it horrible, basically, for you. So be aware of that when making your tank. Uh, the main things that you want are just protection and then try to keep it as lightweight as possible or else life's just going to be terrible. So we're going to stick one of these on to the front. Uh, I'm not going to make it super perfect, but it came out kind of perfect. And then one other thing we're going to do here is we're going to take one of these and we're going to rotate it like this. And we're going to stick it perfectly centered on this. And that makes it easier to get up in here. Otherwise, sometimes you have to climb in from the side. And it's just it's an awful disaster. Now what we're going to do is take this one. And we're going to try to line this up as best as we can. But it's very hard to see for this one. So try to get it as square as possible on this thing. We're on a slight angle, though. So it didn't really work out. That is that is ugly as all hell. Let's Let's fix that up real fast. Okay, is that better? Okay, that's a lot better. Now what we can do is we can climb the side of it if it's like this. And now we can go up here and it's time to put on the uh, the the weapons. So we're going to put on... In this case, I'm not going to put that beam like we had in the demo. But if you want the beam, you can literally just put a beam on from the side over there. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, you can just take one of those over there and turn it upright. And then stick it on like this, which will give it more coverage. Honestly, I probably should do it. it. It makes it way more, though, which is what the part that sucks and the reason I don't want to do it. But uh, it does make you have much better a coverage. So then what you're going to do is put the beam like that. And then you're going to take the device. You're going to see where the eye is. I'm going to face the eye forward, but I don't know if it even matters. And maybe it does. I don't know if it, I don't think it can fire backwards. It can only look turn left and right, I think. I haven't played it a whole lot, though. Now you're going to take the unicorn horn. You're going to see which way it's facing. Uh, you want it to face like this. It's going to be look like that. That is it facing forward and being upright. And then you're going to put it 
on top of that homing device. So the homing device... Oh, did I show you where to get this? The construct head? Was it from one of any of those? I better double check this real fast. Uh, yeah, the construct head comes from this one. So everything we need is... Construct head, steering stick, big wheel, small wheel. They're all right there. And again, if you weren't watching the other part of the video that I showed, then it was right here in order to get the beam emitter. And then it was right here in order to get batteries if you want batteries. Okay, so at this point... The tank is done, guys. You have a tank. You can get in it now and drive it around. Now that we have so many heavy parts on it, though, the battery is going to drain kind of fast. It's not, like, totally horrible, but it does kind of suck how fast the battery drains. So this is why you definitely want to do this, like, you want to get those battery charges, get those crystalline zonites or whatever, and get them turned in so you can get more battery charges. But also, if you want to be wasteful and you have tons of zonite charges, then what you can do is those batteries we talked about, well, we got a bunch of those, so I can take out, say, four of those. And then I can use Ultra Hand. And I can just stick them wherever in here. I can just attach them literally anywhere in here. Hold on. I can attach them anywhere in here. And that'll make the, make the tank automatically use them when it's on instead of using my battery. So now that I have all those in, I can go. And until all those blow up, I can just drive around for free, basically free relatively speaking i mean that cost me a, a ton of zoni charges i would say on average about like on average a battery probably costs like two zoni charges or something so it's not a, not a very good deal to be honest but you know so we're coming up on our first serious encounter we only have two batteries left and another one's about to be blow up we're gonna see if we have enough beam energy once that beam gets going it's gonna destroy those batteries because that beam uses a ton of energy but well, we're gonna see how we fare against these i Oh, the beam emitter knows who the big guy is, too. I was wondering if he was even going to hit him. So this guy can't really do anything about us because when they coded his AI, um, they did not expect you to be in a tank. So he doesn't have ballistics, like, at all. Um, and also, wow, the, the batteries are way more efficient for the beam emitter than your actual battery. Like, those batteries lasted way longer than they should compared to my normal charge. So whenever you kill somebody, you're just going to come out here and loot your stuff. Well, that was a boss, an actual boss, Bokoblin. And we just defeated them with our tank, and there was nothing to it. Uh-oh, there's a choo-choo. I better get in fast so the tank can destroy it. Oh, that's right. The tank can't fire backwards. So we got to get it in front of us. And we got to get line of sight. There we go. Blew up the choo-choo. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you were wondering how to make a car, well, we're going to take that a step further, and you learned how to make a tank. Not only that... I showed you how to get all the pieces so you can make the tank whenever you want, wherever you want. Not just a one-time thing. You can just make as many tanks as you want whenever you want to use them and run around and kill everything with a tank. But that's how to make a tank and use it in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom.